I call the Park and Rec Board meeting for Tuesday, July 16th, 2019 to order. Roll call, please. Mark Hestonia. Here. Justin Miner is excused. Mark Williams. Here. J.C. Dansman. Here. Aideen Hess. Here. Deborah Lundberg. Here. Chris Serbel. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Need a motion on the agenda? Make a motion to accept. Second. You got a motion in the second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Written communications? I have none. Anybody? Nope. We'll move on to seven, uh, action on the consent agenda, which is the Park and Rec Board meeting, regular meeting minutes from January 18, 2009, June 18, 2019, and Park and Rec and 4th Street July expenditures. Anybody have any questions or I will take a motion to approve that. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Eight, action item Smith Park Pathway Extension Bid Recommendation. David. All right. Um, we are trying to uh, extend the pathway over at Smith Park. Uh, currently, it just goes from Shady Lane um, up to the playground past the shelter area. Um, if you guys look on the next page, we've actually got a map of the park. Um, so you can see where the current pathway is and where it stops. Uh, we are trying to increase ADA accessibility in that park. Um, so we are uh, proposing to extend from the current stopping point around the playground over to the view lane cul-de-sac. Um, that was the base um, project that we have for this um, and then our alternate one is going to have the same starting point but going over to the tennis courts and it'll actually go up to the concrete slab that we have for the porta potty um, and then our alternate two um, is going off of the current pathway and it is going up to the drinking fountain uh, right now that's just a crusher dust uh, pathway that we have over there and we do have a lot of issues with um, kids in the park taking the crusher dust and actually jamming it into the drinking fountain. Um, so it's kind of a big maintenance issue that we currently have. We are having the maintenance guys unclog that almost weekly. Um, so that would be a nice addition um, as well. So the, this is a budgeted project. The budget for the project was $19,000. Um, the total for all three of the projects, or all three of the pathways, is um, $20,160. Uh, um, so it is slightly over um, budget. Um, but I guess what our hope for the project would be to do all three of them and then the alternate two. Um, the water fountain slab and pathway, that's uh, $1,600 right there, um, using some park maintenance funds to um, cover the overtures for, for that project. This was part of our comprehensive plan too, wasn't it, Rex? Uh, correct. It is listed in the comprehensive plan as well as our ADA accessibility plan. Anybody got any questions? I think it's a great project to be very honest with you. Yep. So help that park out immensely. We try we tried to place it so also uh, to leave plenty of room in the outfield for the baseball diamond. As you can see it you know we would miss that, still allow plenty of room for, for playing of ball diamonds and not interfere with that. And then for the uh, for the bid it would not only be the actual concrete, but it would be um, digging out the pathway and putting down the um, stone that needs to be laid. Um, so Quinn and Quinn and Sons was actually our low bid. Um, they came in quite a bit um, less than Express Excavating. 
Um, one thing to note is with the bit security check, we do require a 5% um, bit security on that. Um, originally, they, it was kind of, I, I believe they misread uh, the way we had it worded. So they actually put down the 5% off of the alternate two instead of the base bid. Um, so they originally gave us a check for $81. We contacted them um, right away, um, just once we noticed that issue, um, and told them that the 5% security check had to be off the base bid, not the alternate. Um, so then they did bring in, um, actually last Friday, they brought in a check for $543.60, which would be the 5% off of their base bid, which was $10,872. What's your recommendation, David? Uh, my recommendation would be to accept the bid from Quinn and Sons, um, and then I recommend forwarding to Village Board uh, next week on the 23rd for final review and action. How, how wide is that pathway? That is a six foot wide pathway. Um, and then the actually to the drinking fountain, that one's five feet over there. So. The six foot matches the current pathway that we have from Shady to the playground equipment. Okay. Have we worked with these guys before? Uh, Quinn and Sons put in the pathway at Canterbury Park from the roadway to the shelter. Okay. So yes. I'll make a motion that we accept the bid from, from Quinn and Sons uh, in the amount of $20,160 for the work at Smith Park. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Happy hot dog cooking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right, a little bit. Uh, 8B, renaming Lois Obinger Park. So uh, this was brought forward by village trustee uh, Gary Paul. Um, Gary's not able to make it this evening, but he'd like uh, discussion and, and potential forwarding the village board on your thoughts on renaming Lois Avenger Park to strictly Avenger Park. Um, I haven't had a chance to look up the exact date, but I, I, it was probably about seven or eight years ago, I believe that we renamed Tower Park to Lois Avenger Park. Um, that action uh, was championed by former village president uh, Ted Pamperin, uh, with Lois having or being a community stalwart in Ashwaubenon for, for many, many years. Um, thought it was appropriate to, to have that named after her being right across from uh, where she worked at the Ashwaubenon Press. With the passing of uh, Village President Mike Obinger, um, Gary also felt a, you know the the whole family's contributions is certainly noteworthy, um, and therefore uh, he'd like to have discussion um, and and see the name potentially change from Lois Obinger Park strictly to Obinger Park or potentially Obinger Family Park. Um, we talked with uh, Ted on this, Ted Pamperin, who originally championed the Lois Obinger name, um, and Ted was fine. Uh, in, in fact, he, he, was, he thought it was a good idea to name it strictly to Obinger Park. Um, I called um, Annette Obinger, uh, Mike's wife. Um, Annette was kind of going back and forth on it. Uh, she didn't have an issue with it. Her concern was that there were multiple other people in the village, um, Tony Frigo, um, John Monfiles, a few other people um, that uh, also, you know, were worthy of facilities being named after them. Um, but we already have an Avenger Park, so it would kind of just be tweaking that name, not creating a brand new facility. Um, so I'm bringing this forward on behalf of Gary and, and, and uh, requesting uh, discussion and action on changing the name from Lois Avenger Park to Avenger Park. I have no concern with that. I think it's a great idea. I feel the same way. I think it's a 
good idea and it, it kind of um, pulls Mike's name kind of into it. So I'm all for it. I like the idea also. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I just, uh, I know that when they named it for Lois, that was uh, for her time served on the park board and, and giving to the community. And I don't know. The only the only reservation I have is losing that losing that losing that contribution. I guess you know what I mean. It's not losing it, but it's sure. No, I I get it, Mark. I, I can't speak for for Gary on that. Um, what his his thoughts were on that. I'm I'm just bringing this forward on on his behalf. But I don't have so. a problem with it at all. I, I guess I mean um, one way or another. I, I just that's the only negative I can see about it. And I think it's great in the fact that you're honoring the Obingers, both Lois and Mike. Mark? Well, I, I, I can see your point where, because I think both of them were active in the community, Mike actually held official positions, so it might eventually uh, become more known as uh, a park name for Mike rather than for the for Lowe's or the whole family. But I guess that's not a big concern. I don't have a problem on moving it on the village board and having a discussion there on, on renaming it, I guess, and see what the village board thinks about <laughs> it. Uh, but that was that was the only thing that I could think of is you know, it's, it's honoring Lois is what that park is doing. Um, do you need a recommendation or a motion I'm, by the I'm, board? I'm sure we do because I'm sure, well, I know two of you are village board members, but I'm sure the rest of the village board will want to know what the park board thought. Therefore, I think it's appropriate to, to have a vote. Okay. Does someone want to make that motion? If. Or if one were to separate, keep it as Lois Obinger, do you see anything future down the road in terms of honoring Mike? Well, there's a road in Titletown named after Mike already. Okay. The Titletown district. So, I mean, there is there something, is something honoring him already. So, I mean, it's not, you know, it's, it's, there is so that. something has been there is already. Something there. Well, I, I wasn't aware of that. The Packers renamed that little stretch of off Ridge Road for Mike. Okay. Hmm. When we redid that. I feel like there were two stories. Debbie, you're gonna have to talk a little bit closer. I'm sorry. Okay. I thought they were both equally. Um, Working for the the park and rec, I thought they were, they both contributed a lot to the park and rec. They they were they were certainly both champions of the department. Yeah, yes, I mean were. Lois played an integral part, being on the park board initially, <laughs> um, forming the park and recreation department, starting the first playground program at Fort Howard, getting Fort Howard Park donated from Fort Howard Paper Company as well as, you know, being integral in the Sesquiton Centennial. It's a tough one to get out. Um, as well as a lot of the other village events. And, and, and we all know Mike. Um, Mike, for years, you know, championed Park and Rec through, um, and it's not just Park and Rec, the whole village, really. Championed the whole village through the Eshwabnon Press, um, through the Historical Society. They're both certainly, you know, top citizens uh, in Ashwabanon's history. So I, 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 I'm, you know, Lois Park named after her. Mike has a street named after him. I, I'm, I'm fine either way, keeping it Lois or, or moving it to strictly Avenger Park to recognize, you know, the both of them together. See, that's the yeah. problem with this this request is like, mm -hmm. it, we want to recognize, we want to make sure that they're recognized and is, is it duly recognized? It's not a controversial thing. It's more controversial trying to make up your decision whether it's justified, right? It's justified, but which is the right 
appropriate way to go. I mean, I, li I like, I personally like the renaming. I mean, I, I try and put myself in the same shoes, and I would, I think it's a big statement to have the last name on there and, and represent the family. So I'm, I'm more apt to go with Aldinger Park. Did you want to make a motion, Jason? Sure. Yeah. Um, motion to renaming Lois Albinger Park to Albinger Park. Refer that to Village Board. Refer that to Village Board. Thank you. Second. A second. Okay. We have a motion to second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Wonderful. Um, 8C, discussion on food truck rally update. Uh, there'll be a more thorough one uh, at either the August or September Park Board meeting, but I just want to say we just got done with our second rally. Uh, the first two have been, I, I would say, successful. Um, guessing we probably had between 750 to 1,000 people at each one. Uh, we've had eight food trucks at the first rally, seven at the second. Uh, we've had, we found out early on, because we didn't really know how this was all going to develop, but we found out early on in the process that we, we needed to have musical entertainment. So uh, both of the rallies to date have had bands added to them, as does the third rally, which is coming up on Thursday, August 1st. I don't know, have, have you guys had, a, did you, any, anyone have a chance to attend any of them at all? They were pretty, they were, I thought they were well attended. I thought that worked out well. Um, originally the layout was going to be having the food trucks in the center court of the park. Because of how wet it was in mid-June, early June, uh, we decided to have the food trucks on the main roadway and make the people kind of loop around the outer roadway closer to the lake. Um, that worked out so well the first time, we decided to do that the second time and we think that really now is, is the layout that we should be having. Um, so I think uh, it turned out well. Mark, I know I saw you there at, at both of them, right? Um, yes. Comments, thoughts on, on, on the rallies today? Everything was just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try any special food? <laughs> if you can feed me, I'm satisfied. <laughs> So we'll have more of a, I just didn't know if anyone had any questions, but I did want to say that the next one is coming up on Thursday, August 1st. They've been going over well to date. Um, some really good turnouts. Um, we've had the movie nights in the park following the first two. The third one, we are having a lake special event where we have free swimming from four until eight. During the food truck rally, we also are having a pirate day as part of the food truck rally, so there'll be special pirate games for uh, any of the youth that choose to participate to uh, try and bring some of those families out there as well. So the, it, it really is more of a family food truck event. I know a lot of times food truck events are more for the younger set, I, I, I guess maybe, and, 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 and uh, with, the, with, the, with the louder bands and, 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 and the beverages that are served. Um, but I think we're doing a good job really keeping it a family friendly event. We have a lot of games set out. We have uh, six to eight sets of uh, beanbag games for people playing, and we're not leading them. At first we thought people wanted us to try and help lead the games. They just wanted to play. So the second one, we, we, we didn't even bring in extra staff. We just put out all the games, and people walked over to all the different game areas and just played on their own, and it worked out great. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we're going to continue doing that. So, Any questions on, on the rally? I just wanted to kind of bring you up to speed on how those first two went. And are, are the food truck people satisfied? Um, I would say the majority of them are. There's a couple um, that that felt, you know, we had one or two too many trucks. Um, but the other, you know, it really depends on what you're selling and, and stuff like that too because I would probably say 80% of them were, were happy. You know, I, 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 they, they all have a certain dollar amount that they they yeah. need to make, and I would say the most most of them did well on that. And the one that was happy on the first rally was not happy. Did great on the second rally. So who knows? Maybe they decided, oh, we've tried these other ones on the first rally. Now we're going to try the the second group of trucks. And now you know, all of a sudden, they were one, they were one of the ones that they tried the second time, and 
and uh, there were lines at that particular truck the whole night. So, you know, all in all, I think I talked with a couple of vendors and, and they felt they did well at the second one also. Yeah. So. You, you can't uh, patronize all of them at one, one person can buy some of them all. Try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so get there it, early. It, I think a lot of people are experimenting and trying different yep. things too. And then that's a good point, Mark. There, I mean, obviously, what we try and do when we when we invite the different vendors in is we try not to have duplication of foods from each truck, no. so that you know what I mean. So because otherwise, if you want a taco, or if you want you know barbecued beef, well, if there's more than one person that is serving barbecued beef, then that splits that person's profits because you know people are trying to figure out which one to go to. So. We're trying to divide it up a little bit. Um, we we have a couple new ones coming up uh, for the third rally. I think we have Rustique Pizza coming in. So I know a lot of people are kind of excited to see what they bring, as well as um, oh, uh, Phillies in York, which has Philly cheese steak sandwiches. Mm. Um, so that'll be a new one that has. Have, neither of them have been to the first two rallies. So we try and bring in a couple of new ones each time just to try and mix it up and, and get some variety in there. So hope to see you on August 1st. Stop by. Okay. Thank you, Rex. And we'll go on to the Park Rec Forestry Department report for July. Uh, well, a lot of stuff going on. Park programs are in full, full board. Um, you know, a lot of the programs are going, uh, trips are going well. Um, Argonne Park Playground equipment has been ordered. It's supposed to be delivered uh, mid-August, August 14th specifically. Um, and then so we're looking at a late August, early September install for, for Argonne Park equipment. Um, our first neighborhood special event is tonight over at Fort Howard Park. Um, I believe that is Hotel Transylvania 2 for the movie. And then right now they're serving the, you're starting to serve the hot dog lunch and doing all the games with the kids. Um, also going on tonight, if, if you're really excited about doing something, stop on over because we've, uh, when I'm done here, we'll be going, we've got the corp, our, one of our corp meetings going on tonight over at Fort Howard as well. So hopefully we'll have some people um, uh, giving us some opinions on park facilities and amenities and, and what, what some of their visions are for the future. We have not had good luck with the first couple of meetings in terms of people showing up. But one of the things that we didn't do this year that we did back in 2014 is that we typically did neighborhood mailings. Um, we did not get numbers that we were looking for, any people really. We've had some online surveys filled out, but we haven't had people showing up to the ones we've had in the parks. So we did, uh, we're, we're back to doing mailings now. And we're hoping since that worked back in 2014, uh, kind of reminded people that the meetings were there for those that aren't on Facebook or look at our website, that type of thing. That, that'll spur some interest and in, in, in people showing up, giving their thoughts. Um, June, I'll be honest, was not a good month for Eshwaba May Lake. Uh, July looks like so far to be a lot better. We had almost 700 people on Friday and Saturday of this week. Um, Sunday was almost at a thousand people, so obviously the 80 degree weather and the humidity brings people to the water. Um, so if that continues, hopefully we'll be able to make up some lost ground in July. Because um, June was not was not good, as you know, it was like barely got out of the 60s on most days in June. And I I, I think uh, if we were open half the month of June, we were we were fortunate. Um, Ed and Joanne Kirchmar uh, donated a new solar-powered scoreboard for Clipstein Park. Um, our crews put that up um, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, so that is our the village's first solar-powered scoreboard. Um, being a, a, a site that has some contaminants underneath the ground, we thought that might be the best way to go because the, the wiring underneath the ground was giving the board issues, um, some short, so we had to go with the solar-powered one. And so, so far, so good. We've used it. it. It's been used and it's been working great. So exciting about that. Um, the NRDA project, if you've gone out to Ashwaba May on the North Point, you're going to see um, a contractor fence around an area with a barge and a couple heavier pieces of construction equipment. They're building two fishing shoals just off the North Point of Ashwaba May Park. That's part of the NRDA GLRI grant. 
Uh, as part of that, they're cutting down some trees along the waterfront, felling them into the water, picking them up, taking them on the barge, and then sinking them, anchoring them down with concrete uh, collars that was that were taken out of the old Mike McCarthy Way project that we've been saving, um, and they're using those as anchors for those trees, and those will be used for for fish habitat. Uh, it'll take about a year for those trees to really get waterlogged and and sink down in the water. Um, but uh, we're, we're, we're working with that and the contractor is going well, contracting is going well on that. As part of that, um, they also took out part of the Manso Flat sea wall, seaplane wall. If you might know that as the old Tillman property. Uh, they put two, uh, two culverts in, the, in that so that water is able to move in and out of that, that seaplane area. Um, and it hopefully will not be as stagnant as it used to be. Um, just trying to get a little more water flow and action through there um, to, to get rid of some of the algae that continually grows in there. So that was all part of the grant as well. Um, so things, things are going well. A lot of things happening, um, you know, around town. Any questions um, on park projects or, or things? That are happening in the department. Okay. No. Nope. I've got a follow up. Uh, we uh, looked at the dog in the park issue, and uh, in the past, has there been any flare ups on that since then, or is everything going nice and smooth? With the dogs being allowed in Ashwaubenon right. and right. Fort Howard, we've I have only heard of one, and, and, and it's no different than it's been for the last five or ten years. Sometimes people bring their dogs into the baseball area to watch their kids play baseball. And, 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 and if they do that, if, if someone has a concern, they have two options. They can ask the person to take their dog out, or um, they would call public safety um, because dogs are not allowed in the, in the baseball area, in the, the places where people congregate, basically. But I don't think, uh, Dean, that is from... The, the emphasis on, on allowing your dogs, I think that's just, I mean, we, we've had that from, quite honestly, day one, just people yeah. bringing their dogs in. And, and they're, I'm sure their dogs are very friendly, but, you know, not everyone is a dog lover, and some people are allergic to dogs, and therefore, you know, you need to be, cog people need to be cognizant of both sides. Okay, a couple other items. Uh, Back in the spring, we, there was an issue there. We didn't have enough lifeguards for uh, Ashwaubenon. We're okay with that now. We got everything just good, up and running. We're doing well. Okay. Mel has done a great job of recruiting some extra people, and we're up and running, and, and we're, we are not short after when we are staffing people. And since our drone ordinance, uh, have we had any drones in Ashwaubenon? I don't know. Okay. I have not <laughs> seen any. But, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest, it's, it, it's a good park. I would think if I had a drone, it might be a place I'd be interested in flying them, but I haven't seen people fly them. Um, and no one's reported to us that there have been people flying them. So I, 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 there's been no issues. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay, items for next agenda. I've got one, one more quick announcement, Mark. Um, okay. Tomorrow, Let Me Be Frank should be a great concert at Clipstein Park, um, 11.30 till 2. It's also Ashwaubenon Senior Citizen Day. Lunch for Ashwaubenon Seniors, show your ID for only $2. That's either a hot dog, hamburger, or brat, along with chips and a drink. So it usually brings out a pretty good crowd. I know it's supposed to be warm tomorrow, but it, it's still gonna be a great show. Frank always puts on a good show. And then Daddy D the following week, also a great show, and that's gonna be sponsored by, and tomorrow's sponsored by Woodside um, Senior Communities, and then in, next week is uh, Daddy D sponsored by the Ashwaubenon Business Association, um, also their restaurant rally day. So some fun ones coming up. Okay. Uh, next agenda, um, CC operations update. Okay. All righty. If there's nothing else, I need a motion to adjourn. <coughs> Move to adjourn. Second. 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thanks, everyone.